Growth Point Properties has been putting on a defensive performance in muted markets. And while things are looking better than they did two years ago, it's not to say it isn't battling new challenges. The ongoing burden of load shedding has presented a big one that's come with a hefty price tag as Growth Point covers its bases, fueling generator capacity at its big shopping centers. But it's now changing tack. It's set to be the first in South Africa to be wheeling renewable electricity through Cape Town's energy grid via the city of Cape Town's wheeling pilot project. Growth Point SA CEO Estienne de Klerk joins me now with more of the detail on that. Estienne, so good to be with you today. And I want to start off with, I guess, the basics here. What exactly does wheeling energy entail and what value is it putting on the table? Yes, thank you very much. Wheeling effectively is, uh, the simple concept is that you have a, a generator, so that would be a, a power station, which could be anything from a coal power station, uh, a wind power station, or in our case, uh, we have a solar array on, on our roofs, and that power is then wheeled, usually through a transmission grid, which is owned by Eskom, which are those big power towers. And then ultimately it goes through the distribution grid, which is the, the spaghetti that we see in, in and around our homes and our cities. And that, that, that distribution grid is typically uh, controlled by either Eskom, but mostly by cities. And in this specific case, uh, we're talking about the city of Cape Town. And uh, what then happens is we effectively generate the power at, at one place. We then wheel that, uh, that electricity through. And, and it's metered out at another building. So it's really just an accounting exercise because we generate the power and put it into the grid, uh, and that goes wherever it goes. But then we measure power out at another property, and, and that calculation is called wielding effectively. Uh, and uh, so it's the generating on the one side and the, uh, and the usage on the other side that is then measured. So the importance of that is that in the current environment, we obviously got a monopoly where Eskom is the only real generator. They control the whole transmission network, which are those big towers, and then the, mostly the cities and Eskom control the, the grid. So if a third-party company, let's say like a growth point, would like to build a power station, it would have to make arrangements with Eskom and with the city or to, to be able to get the power to the ultimate customer which in this specific case happens to be a growth point property. And we then on-sell it uh, as growth points to the tenants in our buildings. So as, let's say, the services from uh, our municipalities and government deteriorate, increasingly what's happened in the, in the real estate industry is, is that we, we've had to step into that uh, space and ensure that our customers ultimately get the services they require, which really yeah. expands wider than just power, which we're talking about now. Simplistically, Etienne, and this may seem like a, a you know a very uh, simplistic question in itself, but why not just put the capital to work by investing in renewable energy solutions at your various areas of operations? I mean, why does something like this make more sense? Oh, well, if you go and think about a, a shopping center, generally, if we cover all the roofs, it wouldn't, uh, the sun power there wouldn't, at peak capacity, wouldn't uh, service the, the property uh, at maximum demand. So in other words, if you switch on all the equipment that you need at the shopping center and it's drawing power, it draws more power than that uh, solar, those solar panels or that solar power station can effectively generate. So yes, we are rolling out uh, solar onto our buildings. And uh, in fact, it's become increasingly more complex where you also have to have generators and all sorts of things like that. But ultimately, the efficiency is to rather have one large power station, which services many properties and generates uh, a larger amount of power. And ultimately, you get the efficiencies of scale. So the bigger the, yeah. the, the plant, the cheaper ultimately the running cost should be. And like you said, complements growth points, other energy related operations as well. Why does or why is Cape Town your starting point? I mean, why pilot this project here first? Yes, so the city of Cape Town uh, obviously have been pretty progressive and uh, have been very eager to try and assist uh, the uh, the commercial sector with a uh, with a solution in, in, in respect of power. 
they are all ultimately also a client of Eskom and have been suffering from the same uh, difficulties that we as clients have faced with uh, load shedding, power outages, and poor uh, services. So what they have indicated is they're looking for solutions to work together with the private sector to see whether they effectively as a city can maybe solve their own problems from a power perspective and ultimately wean off the, the requirements from Eskom. So together with uh, various players, they've uh, uh, started working uh, with us to see you know, whether there's clever ways we can, uh, can do this. And yeah, so that we were obviously the first uh, to be able to really implement one of these uh, solutions, which is just a, the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. But you aren't going this alone, right? You are doing this pilot program um, in collaboration with Etana Energy. So what's the rationale there and how does it help achieve your electricity wheeling goals? So if you are uh, going to understand how the, let's call it international uh, utilities or electricity industry work, as I've pointed out, we've spoken about the generators, those are the big uh, power generators. You've got the transmission network and you've got distribution. Now, in, in the international market, many times these are privately owned uh, or commercially owned uh, enterprises. And in, interposed in that is something called a trader. So Etana is one of the few registered traders in electricity and utilities in our country. So what they do is they're similar to a bank in a way. They match the generating capacity to the demand. And they play a pivotal role in ensuring that, let's say, a growth point, for example, uh, in, in our capacity as a client, we're looking to acquire X megawatt of power per day. They will then go and source that from an array of uh, generators, which could include Eskom, it could include uh, a big wind uh, turbine uh, generators or solar uh, power stations. So from whoever is generating it, they go and find the cheapest pricing potentially if we look forward, and then they sell it to the client. So effectively, they aggregate the power and they sell it to different clients. And on the other side, they're aggregating all the clients. And then they, they ultimately ensure the accounting, which is the measuring in and the measuring out, is performed correctly, and they assist with that billing process. So yeah. they perform a very critical role in this, uh, in unlocking effectively what is a monopoly at this stage to really privatize the uh, the, the electricity industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the mechanics of it all understood here. Bottom line, Estienne, what to what extent are you anticipating wheeling energy to reduce the impact of load shedding? And you know, take us through, I guess, some of the goals or targets you set. Yeah, so I mean, the growth point obviously in trying to solve you know some of the uh, electricity challenges that uh, that ultimately have an impact on our clients. You know, we have been rolling out pretty aggressively both generating capacity in the form of diesel and gas generators, but also uh, been rolling out to the best of our ability, a uh, solar um, generating capacity on our roofs. Now, where solar doesn't work, for instance, on an office building, so the office building surface area uh, is is too small. So we have got a couple of office buildings, uh, like in, uh, in Schlanger and Durban. Uh, it was one of the first solar plants that was actually uh, installed was on an office building, but at max capacity, that uh, solar plant only really services about 10 to 15% of the building's demand. So really, it doesn't make uh, financial yeah. sense to roll it out on offices. And Growth Point has a, a, a quite a decent size office portfolio of over 1.6 million square meters. So it is a, a, quite a, a large portfolio in all our large cities. And we do have to find a functional solution for that. So what we have been doing is, and increasingly it's becoming uh, more scientific is we when we look at every single property we try and design an optimal solution so if it's a, a shopping center obviously you've got bigger surface areas you've got large parking areas we can roll out a lot of solar there and in certain cases we've even looked at battery capacity to try and uh, ensure that there's a sustainable power being provided to that property and then to top it all up you have to have generators uh, and they have to all work in unison when the power goes off to ensure that this building uh, really, uh, the people inside and our clients will be oblivious to whether they're being supplied from the backup power or whether they're being supplied from 
the main ESKIM feed. So ultimately, we're trying to optimize that on the one side, but also trying to bring down the cost of uh, electricity to, to our clients over time. So those are all initiatives that are absolutely essential. And then, you know, we've got a, a, a objective uh, to become carbon neutral as a company uh, in 2050. And ultimately, that means that we are looking at green power solutions, which really boils down to a couple of things. Uh, at solar would be a key component to that. Wind power would be another component to that. And then hydroelectricity is also something that uh, can be contemplated. So we are looking at all these uh, alternatives uh, down the line uh, from an investment perspective to try and see whether we can meet those objectives uh, or, or that the company has set. So looking at that down the line vision then, how does Growth Point see this energy wheeling plan growing into the future? I mean, there's got to be room for expansion into other provinces or regions, surely. Absolutely. So this is really a test pilot phase, if you'd like. And, um, and we've obviously proven that it now can work. And ultimately, what has to happen is, is there has to be an agreement between the trader and the client, okay, importantly. So that's the first leg. And then secondly, there has to be agreement between the trader and the generator, so buying that power. And then the third uh, kind of arrangement that there has to be is there has to be an arrangement with the, either the transmission network provider or the, the grid provider. So if you think about the spaghetti in our towns, that would be usually town council, right? And those, those uh, uh, providing that infrastructure comes at a cost, and you have to agree that all the little rates along the way. So we are busy working on all those kind of things. And I think because Cape Town, you know, doors were open first, and, and they really have uh, their heart and soul in solving this problem, and we're eager to help them uh, do that, you know, we've been able to work with them quite functionally. And the idea would be to sort of set out a recipe there and, and test test it and ensure that it works functionally. And then, yes, we will be, and we already are engaging, you know, other cities in the country to, to try and uh, do the same. We have made quite a lot of progress with our discussions with Eskom on, on doing the same thing. Obviously, where, like in Santon, where they actually are the, the transmission provider and yeah. the grid provider. You know, it's, it's obviously a little bit easier, but there are quite a few regulations and a lot of red tape, uh, unfortunately, in this process. And uh, these things take a little bit of time. But ultimately, the way we see it as growth point is, you know, we can enter into power purchase agreements uh, with through the trader with uh, generators acquiring green power and then uh, providing green power to our clients. And then they will get the benefit of that from from a carbon uh, measurement perspective. And, uh, you know, I think it will be a, a big step forward for, for South Africa, ultimately, as we see this area of uh, utilities provision develop. Absolutely. Well, certainly keen to see, SG, and how, you know, this all plays out because this is what's being increasingly spotlighted, right? The fact that there is opportunity and room for innovation where there are problems that need uh, solving. And this is how some of the, the smart money out there is being put to work, you know, simultaneously achieving some of the broader ambitions like managing an effective energy transition, like you say. So let's leave it there. Thanks so much for having chatted to us today. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.